I'd like to play an audio clip for you and show you a photograph that changed my life. It's perhaps the most famous photograph ever taken, and it was captured on Christmas Eve 1968 by astronaut Bill Anders as he and his crew made that first mission to orbit the moon, orbit the moon during the Apollo 8 mission. In this iconic photo, you'll see the Earth rising up far beyond the lunar surface. The photograph is called Earthrise. And what you'll hear next is the actual audio from that mission, captured just seconds before Bill took the shot. Oh my God, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, that pretty. So if you didn't hear through the distortion, Bill said with wonder and awe, oh my God, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, isn't that pretty? And for the first time in human history, we saw the entire Earth from space. If there had been an internet in 1968, this photograph would have broken it. It's been deemed the most influential environmental photo ever taken. When you see something from afar, you gain context. And when you see the Earth in this photograph, you see it as fragile, as finite, as home. The beauty and vulnerability seeing Earth there hanging in the void, protected only by its thin, paper-thin atmosphere from the harshness of space, fundamentally changed the way we view our planet. I remember for me, whenever I was a little girl, I was fascinated by the space program. And photographs like this one inspired me to get my own telescope, visit observatories, and even with pencil and paper, begin logging satellites as they raced across the West Texas night skies. I loved space, and space was a part of my life. That same passion eventually led me to the Air Force where I served for 21 years. My first job in the Air Force, thank you. My first job in the Air Force was flying on board a surveillance aircraft, monitoring the ground for enemy movement. It was a battle management system that was well ahead of its time in the 90s, pulling intelligence feeds from other satellites, from other aircraft, and fusing it with our own sensor on board to provide a higher level of context, or for what the Air Force calls situational awareness, enabling decision makers and warfighters with real-time intelligence to better plan and execute their missions. Eventually, I moved up, both figuratively and literally, into the space domain, where I operated experimental spacecraft and helped to develop some pretty amazing space systems. My Air Force career was a dream job. It was the nexus of my two loves, aviation and space. And throughout my career, we were reliant on that type of data from aerial platforms and satellite data. But there were hundreds of Earth imaging satellites collecting millions of images every single day. And with the proliferation of drones, we were collecting more live video in a single day than the entire NFL archive. And while these systems on board these satellites and aerial platforms are impressive, they cannot make sense of the data that they collect. And because of the sheer volume of that data, we mere humans can only turn a fraction of it into actionable information. We'd have to hire millions of analysts to go harness this information and analyze it screen by screen. This was troubling to me. What were we missing? Were we making incomplete decisions based off of incomplete data? So this was my frustration. I loved the Air Force, and I loved serving my country, but it really bothered me that we were collecting so much valuable data and effectively using so little of it. I knew I had to do something. Software that could rapidly archive and retrieve information was becoming very more, much more common in the commercial spheres. But that same technology was not being developed and, and deployed very quickly in the military sphere. I considered myself a change agent in the Air Force, but this was 
big. And if I was even going to remotely help solve this problem, I was going to have to do it on the outside, where I could very quickly harness the talent and the technology to move this quick. So in 2017, I retired from the Air Force. I became a civilian, and I co-founded our company, Slingshot Aerospace, where we're helping to solve this big data problem, not only for defense, but also for commercial companies and disaster response. We've combined our technical expertise with the radical advances in artificial intelligence and high-power computing, harnessing and analyzing satellite and non-satellite data at a scale never before seen. Earth imaging satellites take images of the entire Earth collectively every single day. Our oceans, our farmlands, our cities, our deserts. And let me tell you, those images are extraordinarily beautiful. But it's not the beautiful images that's valuable. It's the information that's locked inside. And at Slingshot, our analytics process is complex because it goes far beyond the image and the computer vision. We integrate data from multiple data sources, partner data sources, to provide important context so that others can make highly informed decisions. For instance, when we're working disaster response, we ingest mathematical weather models, overhead imagery, government and commercial databases, and even social media posts to provide a big picture of a rapidly changing situation and enable time-critical decision-making. When Hurricane Harvey hit, all aspects of the federal government were working with local and state authorities to help those Houstonians and Texas get back to their feet faster, just like they're doing right this second in the aftermath of Hurricane Michael in Florida. These storms have been devastating. They've left tremendous wreckage from the flooding and the winds. And because these areas are, for the most part, evacuated prior to the, the storm surge, it leaves very few resources on the ground to gain an immediate and accurate assessment of the damage and to determine safe operating zones for the disaster response and relief efforts. And this is where we come in to help. Using our AI field software and our up-to-date overhead imagery, we're able to immediately and continually highlight dry areas determine the, the extent of the flooding and its severity so that those medical crews and those first responders can reach those safely, highlighting non-flooded roads and optimal hospital routes. Our technology was also used beyond just the disaster repair, disaster relief effort. It has proven the lessen the need for insurance companies to send boots on the ground. Believe it or not, there's still families from Hurricane Harvey well over a year ago waiting for their claims to be approved. But by providing a new way to visualize and to triage infrastructure damage, we're helping those families get back to their lives faster. Just like in this here, the dark red indicates a total loss scenario. Insurance companies can go ahead and send a check without even having to go through the process and send boots on the ground for that further assessment. Our technology is also being used in the national security situations where, um, well, what, the, what, what we call threat indications and warnings in the military. As you could see there, this was a time sequence through the changes um, as, as the Chinese built that island out it's a man-made reef in the South China Sea. And our automated change detection identifies threats like these military aircrafts well before traditional methods. Or understanding bomb damage as it happens, not just for defense, but also for humanitarian purposes, as seen here in Aleppo, Syria. And you can see in the white area outside of the, the purple or down below the yellow area is complete devastation in Aleppo. And this happened just over a course less than a year. We monitor this every single day and apply automated change detection to alert for, for further damage. And as they rebuild, we can also find that. Soon, 
We'll be able to tell you how full the reservoirs are in the southwest this morning versus this afternoon, and that will help us to predict how full they'll be tomorrow in the months and days after that. We can alert at the first signs of illegal deforestation in the Amazon and determine the estimated crop yield for any given season in India. And the list goes on and on. And so what that means is these very satellites that are collecting this data have become increasingly important in so many aspects of our lives. And so we need to protect and monitor them. And so what it, part of what we do at Slingshot is to also take sensors on the ground that observe space in the orbit in which these satellites operate and help reduce that risk by highlighting future anomalies. Artificial intelligence has, has done tremendous things. We often think of space as vast and open, but our, crowded, our orbits are becoming crowded. And it's not just the satellites, there's natural and man-made objects and space junk, and not all pieces of space junk are large like those that ruin the day dramatically for Sandra Bullock and George Clooney in the movie Gravity. <laughs> There's hundreds and thousands of pieces of smaller junk up there. We monitor, we protect against those types of situations, but also for those smaller satellites that we've grown to depend upon, not just the imaging ones, but the communication satellites that you use today and the navigation satellites that you use today to get here. Artificial intelligence is allowing us to unlock previously inaccessible insights around global scale economic, social, and national security issues. Looking up, we are able to predict risk to our high value assets that we depend upon. And looking down, we can automatically identify objects and risk to those objects and monitor change across time for infrastructure and landscape. Our software has been more valuable than I could have ever imagined. We've turned petabytes of data into actionable insights, transforming this world into a safer, more sustainable place to live. We have to take care of this earth. It's the only one we have, and it's home. Thank you.